I'll pay the bill. Oh, shit, I got beef. <laughs> I swear for years, I was, more, I was a grown person before I realized they really wouldn't beef. Nah, no beef. <laughs> Yeah, like, again, yeah, you don't know who people are, and you don't know. I mean, like, and it, we the only way you could get celebrity information was by reading, you know, right on. Uh, and that was just yeah, random magazine. shit that we thought too, though. Anyway, he's like, I told you, it's in right on. That is about Patty Labelle. That's it. Like that's that's exactly you were looking at right on, trying to get music lyrics and shit. That's the, that's how you got it. So like, uh, Bobby Brown would always talk about Kim, right? I didn't know who the hell Kim was, but as far as I was concerned, he might have been talking about Kim Fields because I knew who Kim Fields was. Yeah. Yeah, we thinking about the famous Kim. Right, I famous Kim. Okay, so Kim <laughs> Fields, I bet you it's Tootie. I bet you he's fucking with Tootie. That makes sense. That make that do make sense. I can see that. I can see the two of them. That makes sense. They want to like that's not at all. But you don't know who people are. Like there was no, and there was no way to fact check. You just got to hold it. Checking. You just believe you. Somebody can go on the radio and say anything, and it would just be what it was. Yeah, like remember Sierra was a guy. <laughs> yeah, remember, like they remember, remember her Aphrodite, right? That's some, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm like where the hell that come from? Like she was on Oprah. I don't know. <laughs> oh, but, the Tommy, the Tommy, the Tommy, oh, Tommy, Hill, the Tommy, the Tommy, the Tommy Hill Hill to date, to date. There are black people who will not buy any Tommy anything because you know of the rumor that started in the 90s. You that, know you're racist. Which is like, I, I wish I had the time and resources to research the who did Who put the hit piece out? Like, who got that PR campaign going? Like, who, because it transcended time zones with no social media, period. Like the fact that everyone knew that knew that Tommy Hilfiger went on Oprah and said that he didn't want black people wearing his clothes and Oprah kicked him off. No one could really tell you that they saw the episode, but then you have some people who tell you, some people will be like, I did see it. No, you didn't. Because it never no, and think about this, Stacey. There, there's nobody like even a celebrity never came out like, yeah, Tommy Hilfiger did this. Like, how was it even? Like this, 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 this wire of this communication was like unbelievable because it wasn't like somebody got on TV like, man, I heard Tommy was on Oprah and blah. Nobody ever said it publicly. This is literally went from person to person, <laughs> person like to the person. dog on Underground Road. It with again, no social media, none like at all. Like, how did this? And again, like I said, today there are people who will not. <laughs> Today with the internet, people still believe it. People still, people will still argue you. I argued hey. somebody down about it one day. Hey. Like even when I proved that she was wrong, she was like, "Well, you know, they they still be racist." So fuck. It. Hold on, Stacy. Was what? that the uh, the the disagree to oh agree, no disagree? It, so here's the thing. I don't know if it was her. But if it was, I would not be surprised. If it was, I don't agree or disagree. Yeah. But I, she I definitely believes Tommy Hilfiger is racist. It's amazing. <laughs> like, again, the fact that, one, Tommy has never been, had never been on Oprah. So the interview, like, it's not like it, he was on there and maybe he said something. No, he had never even fucking been on there. And then he goes back, he goes, finally makes it to Oprah. Oprah brings it up and she was like, you've never been on this show. He's like, I've never been here before. Oprah's like, he's never been on my fucking show. It's never happened. And people are still like, she covering for his ass. Hey, Tommy can pay somebody Oprah, bill. Oprah. <laughs> right, but Oprah, Oprah over there just says, she probably got some Tommy all right now. So like, it's the most amazing <laughs> rumor. Uh, it, it, I call it a blith, a black myth. Um, it's one of the that's the biggest yeah. one, though. I think Absolute. it's one of the biggest ones. Like it's, because other ones, you could see where it came from, like in the like the trajectory and like the ten tentacles where it came from. There is no way to know where this rumor came from. Like, Alex, what I, does it even originate I from? That I had the time and resources. Like people, are like, oh, what would you do if you won the lottery? I dedicate my time to doing that. <laughs> like that would be something. Because I mean, at that point, like I ain't gotta go to work. I can travel to different places and talk to people. I would absolutely hire a film crew. And this is what the documentary is about. The Tommy Hill figure rumor. That's it. Like flat out. That's I we would gotta get to the bottom of this. It'd be my life's work. 
<laughs> to leave here with finding out how it started and how did it get from one coast to another? The fact that all it, black what people, even started? I think it was started? like a little Asian girl that started it. <laughs> That's what's crazy. Like who? Like who started it? And then how did it get everywhere? How did it get so it? fast? It could have just stayed regional in that one city or oh, that shit. quickly. And the fact, I mean, it's in. It turns into rap lyrics. Pimp C P A trail nigga polo fuck that hill fit. Tommy uh, and fucking bamboozle. Tommy, Tommy Hill, nigga. Tommy, 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 Tommy Hill. About to put the nigga. 45 to his heel figure. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's how deep it was. So then once, once it starts making it to the music, then that's when, you know, well, it's over now. Because now, but even with that, by the time Pimp C said that, we had already said, fuck it. Yeah, so well, yeah. Tommy was done for then. Right, like I said, the music wasn't even it. The, the, the song or his that line was just reiterating the "we don't fuck with you." And that's an old line too, because Pimp C was in jail, and that uh, Bun B threw that on that song to mm -hmm. to get Pimp C. So that was an old lyric too. Right, like it's 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 the most amazing lyric or, or story that never happened. I I, I would dedicate. Oh, man, that's my man. I that is an amazing. Talk to your PRSA people and be like, yo, like somebody, we like somebody knows. Everybody's a girl named Portia. She was like the first uh PR person for the Vibe magazine. He didn't pay his bill, and they was like, You better pay our bill by the end of the week, or we got your ass. Yeah. <laughs> it just started, it actually, it just started the, the worldwide rumor that it people definitely be that people close. still believe. <laughs> well, because the crazy thing is though, because Tommy even said that his people told him to ignore it. Because they thought it would go away. And it, it just never did. And that's how he ended up years later going on Oprah and talking about it. But allegedly, there was no, they didn't see an upset in sales. And I'm like, that can't be right. Impossible. That's impossible. There's no way that your entire Black demographic stopped <laughs> purchasing your clothes and you didn't see a dip in sales. There's no way. Because why, like, we were buying his shit. Hell, like that preppy look, we were all in. Mm -hmm. Absolutely all in. So like I said, it's funny when I watched the uh, the Abercrombie um, uh, documentary recently and some people were like, it just, I never liked Abercrombie. It just was too white for me. And I'm like, that's what it was. I'm like, I said, you wore, I said, you yeah. wore Polo, you wore Tommy, like you did, and Nautica. And that's it. And then- and, Nautica, once and, po and Polo, and Polo. Right. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that Fubu was, and Rockaway didn't hit to the late nineties, late nineties, exactly. early two thousand, and, <laughs> and it was that catalyst of no. Well, now we're not fucking with these anymore, so now we're going into urban streetwear. Urban is how Rockaway and all them coming to be. Like, I mean, even though there were you know Car Nine all that was before, but it really hit late nineties because we stopped fucking with Tommy. So the, the, the random fit was a uh, polo or not polo, a nautical or Tommy long sleeve. J Jabot jeans in Eastlands. That was your fit. If you were going out on a Friday night, we're recording this on a Friday night. That was what I would wear on Friday night. It'd be a black and gold uh, Nautica, some Jabot jeans, yeah. and some nice high top fucking Eastlands. And that's what, and, and I'd be fly as fuck. I'd be also, like, or, or and or a Turkish true, link chain. Or for the true players like myself, a Nautica <laughs> t shirt with a Nautica jacket with the Nautica swim trunks and some Air Max. <laughs> <laughs> I went to prep school, so we had to yeah. do a little bit different. Or, or some boat shoes if they were if if you couldn't wear tennis shoes to an event, you had to wear the boat shoes. Listen, boat shoes. Being <laughs> at the palace or Saints, and it's a dude there with some swim trunks on, but he got some Tommy drawers underneath them, or especially the the uh, the tracksuit ones that were kind of see throughish. The white, see, the white, the white ones that you can see through, and you can see the Tommy drawers underneath there. It's like, oh girl, Nick, girl, this nigga got money. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, he got money. Ooh, the ballers is up in here tonight. He said he got money. <laughs> the ballers, I ain't know the ballers came out tonight. We 13, 14 years old. The ballers. And, 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 the ballers. and you serious in the ballers. Like you did some ballers. With the, with, the, with the designer underwear. With the designer <laughs> underwear. That's that. Like it's. That's what, so again, there's no way that all of a sudden, like, I mean, and it hit quickly, immediately. So you didn't necessarily throw out the shit that you had, but like, we weren't, weren't nobody burning shit. We, your mama ain't gonna let you do all that. She didn't spend all that money, but you stopped wearing it. 
period mm-hmm. and you moved on so now you got to like rather than having all three that that polo nautica and tommy tommy got taken away so now you're focusing more on polo and nautica and then nautica yeah. just kind of fell offish nautica was yeah. the jacket. nautica fell off they changed tommy the logo off. they changed the, they made the boat a little slimmer yep That's and made it more sleeker boat. made that boat yeah. sleeker I yeah, we like, like the fat boat, not the skinny boat. And then people talking about that's the slave ship that niggas came on. Remember that? Hey, <laughs> not to mention, but and let's not talk about the Timberland tree. Yes, uh, that's yeah. the tree they the hung us from. Tree. <laughs> that's the tree they hung us from. So now it's it, we polo. It all po- we it's all polo everything. You know, you polo did this shit because they're the only one that came out unscathed. Ralph Long. Of all man. the preppy <laughs> gear from the 90s. They're the only brand that came out unscathed. Man, you can go look at some pictures of your granddaddy from the 80s. But they came out unscathed. <laughs> How does Polo get through this? Nautica can't get through it. Tommy can't get and through Polo it. And Polo never changed nothing. They just kept the same thing. They just added chaps and that Polo sport. The, uh, the po- no, the Polo, uh, the Beverly Hills Polo Club. <laughs> <laughs> or the U.S. Polo Assassin. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. They had different brands of fun. <laughs> right, and they kind of found out U.S. Polo Association was before, it was uh, around before yep. uh, Ralph Lauren Ralph was, Lauren. but they didn't care. They were like, oh, well, shit, go ahead. Like, they, they liked the publicity of it. Mm. They didn't give a damn. They're like, oh, okay, it's another. Okay, well, cool. They go and keep that name. Nah, they got one horse. They only got one horse on their shirt. Got three. <laughs> <laughs> three horses. Stacy, no, no, that's it. Broke Hold ass. On. Sit this hit out. Because they're the only one that survived the prep era. Ralph Lauren, man. <laughs> Dude, now I got taken down. Timberland, like. <laughs> Tommy. Tommy tried to make it. Tommy kind of trying to make it come back with the younger generation. I see, <laughs> but they but they bringing back the, the same stuff, like the Aaliyah, you know, the Tommy girl stuff. <laughs> wait a minute. First off, wait a minute, real quick. My mother texted me at nine thirty two this morning. Said morning, heading to Tennessee. Love you. I didn't know she was going to Tennessee. That's it. <laughs> she just texts right now. It's nine oh eight p.m. We Thank made you. it, ma'am. <laughs> That's a that's a thirteen hour shift that you that we that you're uh, unaccounted for. Did y'all drive? They been shot. It is not thirteen hours. From Even if you Louis. flew, you did you walk? Hey, this cool ass Scott from the I Love Nineties Music Podcast. Hit that subscribe button right now. Like it on the SOLC Network. You finna get all the real deal on the nineties, the two thousands, and the splash of that eighties. Do it right now, man. And I'll be your friend.